Hello, and welcome to the Alpha Software Demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software. And today I am pleased to bring you actually three people. We've got Scott Banger, Paul Amon, and Larry Franz, uh, all from Evolytics. Uh, they've put together a very, very cool uh, application which uses AI. It does uh, analytics and it does a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm not going to uh, do it justice. So why don't we just go ahead and get right into it? Hey, Scott, are you there? Yes, thank you so much, Dave. Cool. Appreciate it. Why don't we go ahead and put you up on uh, camera, if you don't mind? Or if you can't, that's fine. Or if not, we'll. I'm going to go ahead and actually make you the presenter. So hold on a second while I go ahead and do that. Okay, and you should see a dialog box that um, will let you share your screen. Thanks. Oh, yes, and I'm looking at the Evolytics application. Yes. So before we get started, can you just, maybe you're going to go into this anyway, can you talk a little bit about Evolytics and what your company is and, and what you guys do? Um, yeah. Before uh, we actually dive into it. Yeah. Love to. So um, thanks again for giving us this opportunity, uh, Dave. Um, and to Alpha Software for the opportunity. Uh, so we are Evolitics. We are uh, a um, um, a so custom software development um, shop based in uh, in uh, Connecticut. And um, for the past year and a half, uh, we um, spent a lot of time developing um, a data analytics, uh, an AI assisted data analytics um, and reporting platform. Um, that uh, really changes the way um, uh, data is analyzed and, and reported um, in, a, in a pretty significant way. So we're super excited about the product. Um, in addition to that, as I mentioned, or as I alluded to, we also, um, a big uh, piece of our business is in the uh, development of custom database applications. Uh, and we spent many years doing that as well. Excellent. Thanks very much. So, wow. I, I'm sure a lot of you are looking at this going, look at all those charts and stuff. So uh, I, let's, let's dive <laughs> into the app. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. So uh, this is our this is our platform. Uh, what you're looking right at right now is, a, is the home screen. Um, it will show you uh, some of the recent uh, charts and graphs and data sets that you've worked on. Um, as well as anything that was shared with you by other users. Um, and the application is really um, is really organized into three um, three areas uh, or three steps rather. Um, the first step is to, as you'll see indicated on the uh, left hand side here on the menu, the first step is really to connect to your data. So you can either connect to your data through um, through a live uh, connection string, or connection link, um, or you can uh, import your data. Um, that won't be live, but uh, users have the option of importing any data that's um, in a CSV file. Um, the transform step is really where the, uh, so that's the raw data that's being connected to. The transform step is really where the magic happens. Um, and that's really the, the the secret sauce, if you will, of the application, which is where data is, um, where the raw data is transformed into meaningful, actionable insights, um, and we'll we're going to spend a lot of time on that particular um, step. Uh, and then finally, visualize is where you can design uh, charts and graphs, um, like you see here, and also put those charts and graphs into um really flexible and powerful uh dashboards so i'm going to go and jump right into this here just to give you a brief overview before we go into the transform step um just want to point out that uh, you can either with connect you can either establish a live connection to a database a sql database whether it's mysql sql server postgres uh etc uh, there's really many options to um, connect to a live database, um, or you can import any file that's a CSV file. 
Um, so for the purposes of this demonstration, um, we're going to work with data that has already been imported uh, as a CSV file. Um, but if we wanted to, it's as simple as dragging and dropping your CSV file into the main window here. Uh, and the, um, the system will walk you through that import process, which is very easy uh, and can get, get going. Um, you can import pretty large files here. I think we have it currently set at up to uh, files that are 80 megabytes in size. So you're talking about hundreds of thousands of records should, should, not, be a, uh, should not be a problem. So uh, with that said, we're going to hop into the transform step. Um, and I'll open up what we call our dashboard, which is our AI assistant, um, our AI assistant for uh, for this this application. Um, and what we're going to do is everything is conversation based, much like ChatGPT. Um, and so what we're going to do is start a new conversation. Um, and for this new conversation, um, give me a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to use a, this, a data source uh, that we've imported, um, and that data source is uh, a very popular um, data source that's used for testing purposes and development purposes online. It's called the Superstore dataset. Uh, you might have used it if you worked in Tableau before, um, and it's hundreds of thousands of records on transactions, on sales transactions. So it will provide a really good basis for um, our, our demo today. So what I'm gonna just do is uh, here, I'm gonna say I want my custom user imports, or if I wanted to use any connection string, this is where I would actually select the connection string that I would like to use. Um, and I'm going to select the data that I wanna look at. In this case, I've, as you can see, I've imported it a whole bunch of times here. Uh, we're just gonna select one of these instances, one of these cases here, uh, Global Superstore Dataset 2. And I'll say uh, Global Superstore uh, Convo. And we'll start a conversation. So just to give you some context for what we're looking at, and also, you know, when when um, you do this, when users use this use the application, you may import data and then forget about it for days and come back to it and start a new conversation and say, gee, I don't even remember what the data looks like. So we have a nice little preview window here that will show you what the data looks like. It'll show you the first 15 records of the data um, so you can get a good uh, foundation for what you're looking at and, and what you can, uh, what you want to um, transform on. Um, so that's basically what the data looks like. Uh, it has a lot of information from order ID to shipping date to customer name, really at a very granular level. This is all fictitious data as well. So uh, let's close out of this. Uh, and then on the left-hand side um, is a list of available fields in the data. So these can be a reference um, if you're not sure if certain information is available as you're typing out a request, um, you can have this as a, as a good reference guide. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in our first request uh, to transform this data. Um, and suppose I wanted to get, as a use case, just something very basic we'll start with, um, total sales by market. So down at the bottom here is my prompt to for a request, and I'll type in um total sales by market and there you go it's really that easy um this gives you a um the results are your aggregates your total sales sums up your total sales by market um and returned with this is an explanation of what was actually done. Uh, so in this case, it says this query calculates the total sales for each market, it groups the sales data by market, and then sums up the sales in each group. Finally, it sorts the results by the total sales in descending order to show the market with the highest sales at the top, which we didn't even ask for, by the way, in, in our request, uh, which is a nice little bonus. Um, so if you click show more info, you can actually see the SQL that was constructed by the AI from our prompt to return the results. 
and you can then take this query and you can copy the um, the statement and you know use that in any database management platform that you want uh, that's connected to the data source wow it's very so, cool yeah thank you i'll pause there for a minute and see if there are questions or anything no questions at the moment, but as a reminder, uh, for those of you listening, you can type questions into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel or into the chat interface, depending on how yours is set up. Um, this is really very cool. And it, what I love is how it, it spits out what the SQL query is. Now, when you demoed this to me a couple weeks ago, I, I thought one of the more interesting points was that none of your data is actually sent over to ChatGPT or to the backend AI system. Instead, uh, you're doing it, all it, All you're asking it to do is, is you're giving it, I guess, the fields, right? And it's giving back a SQL statement and you're executing that SQL statement, not not the AI. Is that, that's, I get that right? That's 100% correct, yes. And right. so what's, as you said, what's happening is, you know, uh, behind the scenes, when you hit that enter button, the um, system is taking your prompt, the user's prompt, uh, and is looking at the fields that are in your data source, in this case, the fields over here, and it's saying, okay, based on the schema, the table schema, it looks at the table name as well as the field names based on the database schema or the relevant schema um, and the user's prompt, let me figure out a SQL statement that makes sense to um, return the data, Very which is what the AI is doing. And then once that statement is created, it brings back that statement and we're executing on that statement. Um, but uh, the AI, you're correct, the AI at no point ever is, your data is never being consumed by the uh, LLM or, or any AI model. Nice. Um, so we can then go on because this is a conversation based uh, sort of chaining um, demand chaining uh, model we can go on and say okay let's do um, let's say we want to get more granular and say uh, now show me um, let's say now show me total sales uh, by market and category and it will show you total sales by market and brings in the category as an additional field. Again, it's showing you in plain English what it's doing as well as returning the um, actual SQL. Uh, now, let's say we want, to, we want to do something a little bit fancier, we're gonna do calculations. So uh, we wanna see, and I put in wanna there intentionally to show you that there's a lot of flexibility in how you can <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've used various expletives in the past which I won't do today uh, <laughs> thank you we want to see um, total um, sales by want to see sales by uh, market against total sales overall and so hopefully this will create a new column that has a percentage that is, um, oops, actually calculated the total sales. So <laughs> that's that that it, it thought we just wanted to see the total sales. I say I want to see a percentage for each. Yeah, so now it gives us the total percentage of market sales uh, divided by total overall sales. Um, fantastic. And you get a and you get around a, a problem that a lot of large language models have in that they're actually terrible at math, but you're having SQL do it. It just had to come yes. up with what the query was. So that's really good. Yeah. yeah. So, so now we can take this, we can save this, and we can say um, total sales by region or by rather by market and let's save that and once that's saved we can get out of this and we can say okay now we want to create a nice little chart with this we can go into our chart builder we have a lot of options here for charts uh we really have sort of created an extensive um, library here of options for users 
let's say we want to do a simple bar chart from this. So we can do that. We select our data set. As you can see, I have a lot of data sets here. Um, and we can say we want to do, um, oops, not sure why that's not working, but we want to do, let's try this one. Um, let's do total sales by market. I'm not sure why it's not working now. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to switch to, this is our, this is our, um, I mistakenly went on to our testing environment. So I'm actually going to switch to our live environment where I know it's working. Uh, and we'll just, um, we'll just do it there. Just bear with me for a moment while I switch over. <clears throat> that was my mistake. I should have just uh, used this to begin with. Oh, no problem. This takes just a second to load. So I, I'm shocked that no one has asked this because they're they're I'm sure it's top of mind. But what did you use to do the charting? What library did you use? So we're using uh, Apex Charts. Apex Charts. Okay, great. Which is um, the same chart library that is used, I believe, by LinkedIn as well as a host of other mm. um, well-known brands out there. Nice. Um, so let's do total sales by market and uh, we're going to do market on our x-axis and sales percentage. Well, actually, let's do total sales overall. Gives us a nice little graph there. Oops, not, we don't want total sales over, we wanted market sales. And we can go back and we can even correct the formatting in, in the uh, conversation to say, you know, only show me uh, two decimal places out. Um, and there's a lot of options here with, with our charts. We've exposed pretty much all of the uh, options that are available in Apex charts. Um, so if you wanted to do, um, let's say we want to display this with a dark background and only want to do um let's see uh where's my favorite one here i'm trying to find my my favorite option which is um to make it horizontal but now i can't remember where it is oh horizontal cool yeah oh um, very nice <laughs> and then we can take this chart and we can put it into a and did that animate board. into place when you switched I thought that's very cool yeah what's that I think that animated into place when you when you switched. That did to animate into place, really yeah, fun. which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's those little animations though that make software delightful for users to use. You know, it's, it's, I, I that's think it's pretty cool. Yeah, very true. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's actually doing something. It's animating it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's that's we can go back. We can just give this a little title here. We can say uh, total sales by market let's center this uh, we don't want a subtitle we'll save this okay uh, and then we can go into our um, dashboards and we have a whole dashboard designer that will allow us to then take this chart and place it onto a dashboard with other charts or other tables um, that we want to display on a dashboard. And then all of our dashboards are displayed down at the bottom. Um, so we have quick and easy access to them. So we can say we want a new dashboard. We get a blank canvas. Let's say we want multiple rows in the dashboard. To say in this row, I want to display um, total sales by market in a uh, tabular format. And let's say in this one, I want to display total sales by market in a graph format. Got my graph over there. I can save this dashboard uh, as sales by market. And then I can go into my menu designer. Um, 
and I can assign that dashboard as a menu item to say, uh, say we want a sibling, um, and we want this to be sales by market, and we'll leave it open. We'll say um, sales by market. Uh, we'll give it a little icon here. We'll say the icon is this. Uh, we'll save it. And now it appears on the left oh, third here. Cool. Yeah. So every time you go in, you can see that whenever you log in. So you're creating your own little mini application here every time you uh, create a little dashboard. So nice. That is soup to nuts, really, the flow of the application. Um, and as you can see, really the the uh, as I mentioned before, the the magic really happens at the transform stage, um, where we're we're allowing the user to, you know, create meaningful transform data from their raw data without having to use any sort of of the you know traditional reporting um, sort of uh tools you know choosing fields choosing uh sorts and filters this is a very intuitive natural language approach to uh analytics and reporting very very cool it's such a great idea to use ai to write the the sql queries for you i mean a lot, a lot of us have been using it to for assistance in code coding so why not sql as well you know right it's just very very neat so, so we a have a couple questions that have come in. Uh, the first is, um, which I thought was a, kind of a cool one, is can the AI see or suggest possible relationships between tables? Or is it right now just one table at a time that it kind of deals with? So uh, no, the answer is yes. Um, oh, okay. if, if you have, you can, you can um, when you're building out a, um, uh, when you're building out a uh, conversation, when you're starting a conversation, you can select multiple um, multiple tables. I don't have one that I can show you that doesn't have confidential information, unfortunately. Okay, um, that's fair. Yep. But uh, you can select, say, uh, if you want patient demographics, you know, and that has patient ID, and you have another one that has patient diagnosis that also yep. has patient ID. The AI is smart enough to uh, know that there's an ID, there's a common ID between the two between the two tables, even if it's not named exactly the same. Even if one it's named patient underscore p key and the other one is named patient ID, um, yeah. it will know that it's smart enough to know that that's actually the same. It's referencing the same information. Oh, that's very smart. Um, the other question is, how are you offering this? Um, is it, uh, do you sell it as a SaaS basis? Uh, is it something that you include in applications that you develop for other people? Or is it all of the above? <laughs> What's, yeah, uh, it's all it's all the above. It's mainly, uh -huh. uh, we're selling it as a standalone um, SaaS application. Uh, it is currently priced at um, $89.99 a month per mm -hmm. user. Um, and, um, with that, you get all the functionality, uh, you get unlimited, unlimited conversations, unlimited data sets, unlimited charts and graphs, unlimited um, uh, dashboards. So Very you get cool. the, full, the full all in. Uh, oh, one thing, if I can yeah. jump in for a second, Dave, Please. I forgot to. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. The suggestions section. Yes. <laughs> this is very I, cool. My, yeah. My, my colleague, Larry, would uh, would not be very happy if I didn't, <laughs> actually, <laughs> didn't actually go over this. Um, so basically what the suggestions is, it's a pretty cool feature and pretty powerful, is uh, if a user is, if you're looking at this data and you're either having, you've either never seen it before, so you don't even know where to start, yeah. or you're having um, you know, a complete block with where to start. Right. Uh, and analyzing you know, do some brainstorming against the data, but you're not really. Exactly. So okay. it, this will give you actually this will generate ideas uh, based on, again, just based on the table schema. This will generate ideas for you to look at, to look at. So um, we're going to look at the global superstore example right now. That's very small. So I don't know if you can see that, but 
yeah. you zoom just a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. So this, in this case, it gives you, uh, it will give you five suggestions of things to look at. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, that is very clever. So and then not only does it show you what you want to look at, it actually suggests what you might want to look at. Which is exactly. Cool. Yeah. So we can even say try it and it will auto-populate into the um, conversation window. It will create a new conversation automatically. Yeah. We'll think of a query based on that and it will return your data. Very, very cool. Let me see. I don't see any other questions here, but um, do you have a website that our users could visit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just it's just, up on your, just pop it up on your screen and yeah. you can take a look at your uh, the site there. It's the volitix.com, E V O L Y T I X.com. Evolitix. And I'm sorry, I was pronouncing it incorrectly at the beginning of the show. But that, that's okay. Right. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent. Hey, yeah. Scott and uh, Larry, Paul, thanks so much for showing up today. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you do have other questions, uh, go ahead and send them into guides, G-U-I-D-E-S at alphasoftware.com. And I encourage you highly to check out the Apolitics website and take a look at this application. So thanks again, and we hope to see you at our next Wednesday webinar. Until then, take care and stay well. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.